lesson. So today we're going to discuss basic cell theory, which is the first lesson in general biology one. All right. Okay, so our objectives for today are the following. Of course, you need to know what is the definition of cell together with what is biology, a brief history of the cell discovery and postulates of the cell theory. I know that you're already familiar with this one since it has been discussed to you when you were in junior high school. So we're just going to run through it. All right, para ma refresh lang your minds. Okay, so define muna natin what biology is. So according to this one, um, biology also referred to as the sciences is the study of living organism utilizing the scientific method. So biology also examines the structure, the growth, and the evolution and distribution of living things. So as you can see, the paper is so broad than biology. That's why there are so many branches under it, like the botany, or the study of plants, zoology, study of animals, um, study of heredity genetics. So there is a lot of things to learn in biology, and uh, specifically um, things to study in living organisms. Maron tayong requirements for you to be considered as living organism. So it must to have an order, sensitivity or response to the environment, able to reproduce, and then it is able to grow and develop, and it has homeostasis or parang develop an internal balance inside its body and energy processing. Uh, so you see here, hindi naman talaga required na kailangan the living organism should be moving. Like for example, the, pa, the plants are considered to be living organism, like even though they do not really uh, go from one place to another, hindi naman sila naglalakad, kaya nakakita na ba kayang puno naglalakad. But still, we consider them as living organism because they, um, for example, um, they reproduce, of course. They reproduce via um, sexual and asexual reproduction. Also, uh, they exhibit growth and they develop. Of course, they, some plants also has this sensitivity, like the makahiya plant about when you touch it so that it is an example of sensitivity or the stimuli around it is the environment okay now what is cell so cell is uh let's uh, use this analogy like when you see cell it is um automatically be connected to biology like when you say atom is to chemistry so somehow we could say that cell is the heart or stud i mean uh biology uh the heart of biology is into the cell talaga. because cells are the smallest unit of life that carry out the same basic life processes like the ba? for example um uh the for example, photosynthesis. So that photosynthesis happens inside the cell, specifically inside the chloroplast. And because of that, the plants were able to produce food as well as the oxygen. If, um, in um, comparison, tayo, the cellular respiration happens in mitochondria for us to have energy then, in the form of ATP. So here you see the dito. And the, like, um, when the same cell, like they have the same uh, function, when they go together, join together, they produce what? So they produce the tissue. And then the tissue working together will produce the organ, organ system, and um, organism. Before we just um, really start with our lesson, so I have here two questions that um, I think na natanong yun na sa sarili nyo, yung tipong patulog na kayo, tapos, oh, saan kaya galing yung cell? Or paano kaya yun na-discover? So let me help you with that. Okay? So to answer that question, we go back to the late 16th century to the early 16th, 17th century kasi dun talaga nag-boom yung cell theory, yung microscopy, and microbiology. And um, we should think, <laughs> I mean, it is because of these two prominent scientists, Robert Hooke and Anton van Leeuwenhoek. 
So these are the important events and self discovery. So just um ano lang to parang pinaka keywords lang kanon summary lang kasi you all um meron din naman kayong copy ng the full timeline of this one, okay? So let's start with 1595. So in 1595, Hen and Zacharias Janssen, so they made the first compound microscope by placing two lenses in a tube together. So actually, Han and Zacharias Janssen, pag masala, and then um, meron silang pagkuha ng salamin. So I don't know if it's because of um, Wala sila magawa, ganyan. Kaya parang, o, tara, gawa tayo ng microscope. Pero, yeah. And during the time, hindi lang naman sila yung nakagawa ng microscope. But, they were the first one to, um, me. To make a compound microscope. So, because of the microscope, many biologists during the time, parang, natuha sila sa pag-observe ng mga things around them under the microscope. That's why, parang naging, and the shot trend during that time. And then, because of microscope, that leads them to see things na hindi na ikita, by your naked eye. In 1665, Robert Hook. So, because of the microscope and because of the cork, cork sample that he had. So, that cork, he examined that under the microscope and then he saw that, um, nakita niya na, Nakita niyo ba to? That is the exact thing na nakita niya under the microscope. So, para daw silang boxes, small boxes. So, it um, parang resembles the cellula, yung, yung, yung kung saan nakatira yung mga box before. Kaya parang sabi niya, oh, it looks like cellula. So, I'm gonna call this cells. But actually, ang nakita niya is dead cells since the cork is considered to be a dead one. So, primarily, kaya siya, uh, it looks really like a box kasi nakikita niya na lang is yung cell wall since yung loob nun, parang wala na masyado since dried na siya, since patay na siya. Kaya mukha talaga siyang box. So, because of that, um, I mean, it was followed in 1665 by Anton van Leeuwenhoek. So, Anton van Leeuwenhoek actually made his own microscope and he observed living cells and he called that animal cubes. Kasi, um, ito yung nangyari. So, he got a sample of a rain shop. What a rain shop. So, I don't know where he placed it. So, something, kasi, di ba, now we use glass lights. Siguro, during that time, they have that then. But, yeah, nilagay niya yung sample and then he observed that under the microscope and then may nakita siyang mga, ano, mga nagalaw na ah, hindi niya kasi alam kung ano tawag doon. So now, we call that animal, I mean, bacteria or protists. Pero before, he called that animal kills. Okay? Okay. Because of that, then, he was called to be the father of microbiology. So after two centuries, so the body from uh, 1665, that was the next day is 1838. So like my two centuries and like the end during that time, sobrang um, maraming na observe yung mga biology during that time. Natuwa sila masyado sa cells, kanya. So they found that cells are everywhere and they established that all living things are made up of cells. Pero they don't really know what's the function of cell. Ano function niya? Since they are, I mean, since all living things are made up of cells. Now, because of um, Matthias Sheldon and Theodore Schwann, they um, said, these two scientists said that these cells are actually the basic function and um, basic unit of all living things. So, paano nasabi yun nitong dalawang scientists natin? So, Maraya Sheldon, sabi niya that uh, the plants are made of cells. So, actually, marami kasi he is a botanist. That's why, um, since marami siya collection of plants, he observed it under the microscope and then he saw that the plant cells are actually, I mean, the plants are actually made up of cells. So, that constitutes the, the tissue of the cell. So, yun, he concluded that, ah, oh, okay, so plants are made up of cells. As well, ganun din yung parang naging 
um, realization ni Theodore Schwann. So, medyo nag-ring ba yung Schwann? So, Schwann, di ba, you know, the Schwann cells. Yeah, siya yun. Siya yung nakapag-discover nun. But anyway, hindi tayo doon. Pero, um, he stated the man that animals are made up of cells. So, yun din. Parang he's fa- uh, his fond of animals. That's why parang he got a sample of that. Then, he said that yung animals are composed of, are made up of cells. So, kaya nalang nasabi yun. So, because of that, um, it actually constitute to the first, um, first two cell theory cell theory so the first one is all living things is composed of cell and then cell is a basic unit and of structure and function of all living things so uh, but the thing here is one of the claims of Theodore Schwann uh, is a pinapish niya is he believed that cells came from um, I mean cells develop similar way to crystals. So this follows the observation of spontaneous generation. So do you still remember the spontaneous generation? Like they believe that the cell can arise from just from non-living things. Like for example, if you have a soap there and then you leave it, magkakaroon siya ng cells or microorganism. Diba? We can see the microorganism as unicellular um, organism, diba? like the bacteria, ganyan. so it's considered as a cell na rin. Tapos, parang, he believed in that, like a crystal daw, parang kanon. But it was discounted, or it was opposed by Rudolf Virchow in 1858. And he said that all cells arise only from other cells, or all cells arise from pre-existing cells, which is now considered to be one of the cell trees. But the thing here is that Rudolf Virchow, I don't know, parang may ganun daw, chinika yun, no? So parang may ganun daw na, that idea is it actually not from him talaga. I mean, hindi siya yung pioneer of that idea. Na parang it is from another scientist, Lamarck. So, may ganyang idea si Lamarck na um, pinoblish niya, pero as an editorial lang. That's why sabi ni Virchow, sabi na it is a form of plagiarism, plagiarism during the time. Sabi niya, no. Kasi pinoblish niya lang naman yun as an editorial. But mine is actually in scientific journal. So parang sabi niya, mas legit yung akin. Pero, and because of his reputation that so parang sabi niya na, pero parang na-uphold niya na, right now, parang we, ano, we cite him, Rudolf Virchow. Pero now, in our time, even if it's just a um, essay, um, it's considered as plagiarism for that. So now we have your cell theory. So it is not in particular order. So all organisms are made up of one or more cells. And uh, the cell is a basic unit of life functions of an organism that occur within the cell. And all cells come from pre-existing cells. So we actually have a modern version of this one since the back, um, it has been centri- uh, centuries since I discovered or established in that law. So we also have the following. Ito apat na to, that is um, an additional to on sa cell theory na meron tayo. So first is the activity of an organism depends on the activity of independent cell. And energy flow or metabolism and biochemistry occurs within the cell like yung sinabi ko kanina. So cells contain hereditary information like your deoxyribonucleic acid or DNA, which is passed from cell to cell during cell division. And of course, all cells are basically the same in chemical composition in organisms of similar species. Now, we could say that because of that cell theory, it somehow evolutionized the way biology is thought about the world and the life on this planet. Because right? before, we don't know how it works. But because of the cell theory, because of those discoveries, um, now we could say, that ah okay so this is the function of that so the cell is i mean all the things are composed of uh cells so somehow it could help us with this following discipline like in cell biology and uh, physiology which is the study of the structure i mean the study of the function of a structure and it could also be a great help especially in formulating modern medicine that can cure diseases or yung mga uh, sakit na wala pang kamot. 
And um, we owe an enormous amount of gratitude to the scientists and the contributions they made to the scientific community because um, kung hindi dahil sa kanila, hindi natin maintindihan paano um, nangyayari or uh, ano yung like, foundation ng cell. Paano nangyayari? Anong, anong nangyayari? Ganun. Okay. So I hope you learned a thing or two about our discussion for today. And uh, if you have time, you could watch this, The Walking History of Cell Theory, and answer the following questions. So yeah, I hope you learned something. See you next video. Bye.